it's that time again. name for a breakfast cereal. Hi, Bobby here, following on from last week's lesson in which we learned to solo using just four notes. Five notes. Okay, five notes. In this lesson, we're going to extend our scale knowledge ever so slightly using a scale that some people call the frying pan. Before we start, don't forget to pick up my free blues rock phrasing course. You can find a link in the description below. Please hit like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video for the bonus lick. So the underlying chord for our backing track is an E minor seven. It's just a static vamp, static meaning it stays on the same chord, 85 BPM. So in the last couple of lessons, we've been dealing almost exclusively with this kind of four note cell between the 12th and 14th frets on the D and G strings. And we've been adding a bend to that, giving us the five notes of the minor pentatonic scale. So flat seven, root, flat three, perfect fourth, and the bend being perfect fifth. And we've been phrasing exclusively using that area of the fretboard. At the end of the last lesson, I said that you could extend that. You could play the same thing in three different octaves. So between the 15th and 17th frets on the B and the high E string and an octave lower, or two octaves lower, between the 10th and 12th frets on the low E and A strings. That gives us quite a large area of the neck to play around in, but we need to join those shapes up somehow, and the way to do it is to play what some people refer to as the frying pan. So on the low E string, we would go 10, 12, and then 10, 12 on the A, and then slide up to 14 on the A. And you can see that that roughly maps out what you might see as a frying pan or a saucepan or a wheelbarrow, anything with a handle really. And then you can take that to the next octave. So that's 12, 14 on the D, 12, 14 on the G slide up to 16. And you could take it up a further octave. So that's 15 to 17 on the B, 15, 17 on the high E, slide up to 19 on the high E. So you now have this whole play area. from the 10th fret all the way up to the 19th fret. really opens up a lot of doors for our phrasing. So the intervals that we have are, as I say, the flat seven, the root, the flat three, the perfect fourth, and the slide being the perfect fifth. At any point when you play that B note, you could substitute that for a bend to the B note. So, or same here. One important thing to remember, although we're starting on this D note, 
that's not the root of the scale. That's the flat seven. A common mistake I see from people, from students, is uh, they'll say, I'm gonna play the frying pan scale in E, and they'll start on an E note. I'm actually playing it in F sharp there, so. Just remember that your point of reference for your root note is on the 12th fret on the low E, 14th fret on the D string, and 17th fret on the B string. So you can really play around with this. You can play licks like. You know, in different octaves. You can throw double stops into the mix. That's something I like to do a lot. So you take this, um, take this B note on the 16th fret on the G string and this D note on the uh, 15th fret on the B and you slide in. It's kind of sliding indiscriminately. I'm, I'm sliding in from two frets below just to give it a little bit of grease. And just kind of run down the scale. It's great to throw double stops into your playing. It gives you a, a whole different dynamic. That's the lick I like to play. So I'm going a grace note slide from 17 to 19 on high E. And then that's 15, 17 on high E. And then 17, hit that twice on the B string. You apply that to the next octave. And the next. So hopefully you can see the potential in this. In just three lessons, we've gone from soloing using a very small area of the fretboard between two frets on two strings to spanning a much larger area of the fretboard, and we're only using the E minor pentatonic scale. And if you combine some of these licks and ideas with the phrasing exercises we looked at in the previous lesson, you should be building a really strong foundation for soloing. Where's the bonus lick? So as promised, here's a bonus lick. This is something I like to call... Jeff? What do I call it? Rolling slides, that's what I like to call it. So what I'm doing, I'm going from 14 on the G, sliding up with the third finger to 16, catching 15 on the B string, hitting 16 again on the G, sliding it down to 14, and pulling off to 12. Makes for a nice repeating lick. Makes for a nice repeating lick. Makes for a nice repeating lick. Mm -hmm. Lick, 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 lick. Mm -hmm. And you can apply that to the next octave. Fingering slightly different. We're going 12 on the A string. 12 slide up to 14. Hit 12 on the D. And then back to 14 on the a, slide down to 12, pull off to 10, and then it just repeats. So try some of these ideas out for yourself. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it, Bouncer? Mm. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to check out one of these videos for more content. Cheers, bye.